All right. I think we got Dr. Jack on here. We're going to bug him about something. Can you contribute, Dr. Jack, to the cause, wherever you are? I saw him here a second ago. There he is. You see me? Yeah. What you doing? All right. So I was going to talk about dry brushing uh, boxcars. And I've got a couple you sent me of the outside brace ones. Okay. So let's, what just happened? What did I do? You can you got, see it. We're looking at Clinchfield. Yeah, okay. we're looking at Clinchfield. Is the detail pretty good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is all dry brushing. And I'm going to talk about the colors I use. And it's a very simple way of weathering these cars. So that's the roof. And that I'll show you is done with black and uh, lighter colors. And here are the sides. And on my phone, it looks kind of fuzzy, but I guess you've got good detail. So here's a roof that's a little more weathered, dry brush. Here is the side. I also added a little bit of rust chalk down at the bottom of the bracing. And then I varied the amount of weathering so that they don't all look the same. But here's a whole series of cars with outside bracing. So now I'm going to put this in the holder so you guys can see me do it. Do I have it the right direction, Steve? I'm looking at your ceiling. Jack. Okay, hang on. Looking at the ceiling. Uh, where's the turnaround? Ah. Hang on. Now I'm looking at your workbench. Okay. Uh, now I'm uh, looking at the box cars. Yeah, I want to rotate. There we go. Now, what are you looking at? Uh, looking at the box cars and you trying to reach into the camera face. All right, we got it? Got yeah, it. that's pretty good. Okay, so basically I use only three or four colors. I like the Tamiya paints. I use flat earth, okay? I use buff. and I use black. So pretty simple with these paints, how I dry brush and I weather it. The secret to dry brushing, this is gonna be a very sophisticated statement I'm gonna make. The secret to dry brushing is have your brush dry. How do you like that? Is that good? So I'm gonna take the brush here, and I'm going to dry the heck out of it. And I keep wiping it. Let me see if we can see that. I keep wiping it until literally there's almost no paint on it. Now, the thing about dry brushing is you have to be patient because if it goes quickly, it's not dry brushing. All right, so I wipe that off. Here's a car that I started, okay? And you can see I did half of it. And now I'm gonna do the other half. And it literally is sitting there. Let me get this box so you can see better. Is that in good focus? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's just sitting there, you know, maybe get yourself a radio or somebody to sing a song to you, whatever you want. But what's nice about these cars is they've got really good wood detail. And what I'm doing is I'm making the wood detail come out with this light buff color or earth. 
and then I'm gonna go back and cover it with black. And the reason is these metal beams have lost their paint over time. And the other thing you can do is after you do the black, you can go back and do the buff again. In other words, you can keep changing it. But the whole thing to dry brushing is literally, there's almost no paint on it. Now, I don't know if the detail's good enough, but can you see the wood grain? Yes. Excellent. All right, so I've got this and I'm pretty much done with that. And I'm happy with the way that looks. And now I'm gonna do black. And the reason is over time, those metal struts would lose their paint and they would be kind of just raw metal. And again, you gotta sit there and dry the heck off of it so that there's very, very little paint. As you can see, most of it is on my hand now. And I'm just drying it and drying it and drying it until literally I can hardly see anything coming off the paint. All right. I assume this is still in view. Yes. Yep. All right. So look. Do you see, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just gliding it over it. Isn't that amazing? I doubt I'll get the Nobel Prize, but look, do you see how the struts are starting to look like they've lost their paint? Yep. Is that showing up? It is. Yeah. Now I do the same thing with the ladder, the same thing down here. And then let's say I've decided that this is just a little bit too light. I'm actually gonna darken the wood a little bit just by lightly going over it with the dark. And you could use other colors if you want, but it's just a great way because I've weathered dozens and dozens of cars. And with this technique, you can easily do a car very quickly in 30 minutes. Now, normally I take the trucks off because I also weather the trucks, but this is giving the struts that kind of exposed metal look. And I'm also, if you could see it, I don't know if it shows up, it's creating a grain with a mixture of both the light color and the dark, which is more realistic. And then if it's showing up here on the door, you can actually see how the metal looks like it's all exposed metal uh, in there. I can't tell how good the detail is. Pretty good? Yes. Yeah, all it, right. It just looks great, Jack. All right. Now, you're going to do the roof. Do you see how I've already done this roof a little bit on this side? I did the black. And then I went back over it with a much lighter color to look like the paint had worn off on either side of the metal struts, because that's what it would do. You'd have the paint worn off the metal struts and then the paint starting to come off the actual box car. And so what I'm gonna do on this side is go ahead and take the black, and I'm just going to keep going back and forth and back and forth. And it takes a while, but you can see how all of a sudden, and you got to have the right brush. It's got to be the kind of soft brush that after you dry it and very little paint, there's no paint getting in between. Okay. The only place the paint is resting is on those areas so that it highlights it. And that's the nice thing about dry brushing is it allows you to exaggerate and highlight different areas. So you can see this area that I've already done pretty dark, a little bit lighter here. And then if I want, I can go back here and use either the buff or the earth color 
to lighten it a little. We got it? Got it. All right, let me show what I've done with the trucks. And then the final thing is taking some of the chalk and creating some rust look here at the bottom. And again, I use those powdered chalks that adhere and they're a great way of creating a rust look, which is what you would normally have on all the fittings on the car. And then I also do a little bit of it on the truck springs with a little bit of rust. And here you can see the top has been dry brushed. Now, you really don't usually need to do and go back with a dull coat because usually if you use flat paints on dry brushing, that flattens out the shiny look of the plastic. Here's another car that I just got. And you can see this side is nothing's been done. And on this side, I've heavily weathered this part, not this. And the other thing I did is, do you see the metal bracing at the bottom? Does that show? Yes. Yeah. What I did is after I got it dry brushed, I took a paper towel and wiped some of the paint off. And that way it looks like you're kind of corroding some of the metal plates and some of it's still intact. And it creates that nice natural irregularity of a black look. And then the paint is still there. It hasn't come off yet. Any questions? So you can do lots of cars very quickly and give them a very realistic look. Obviously, I've gone back and I put my Katie couplers on them also. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Last week you were showing us how to use dull coat and, and to enhance the, you know, to make the brick kind of stand out. Do you have a favorite brand of dull coat? Are you using the actual testers or Krylon or what do you like? I I like the testers, uh, and the reason is there is a form that you can get that uh, what you call it makes uh, Krylon. I don't get the same effect that I do with the testers. The trouble trouble is you need a lot of a lot of coats. Let me get one thing while we have a minute. I'm working on a building. Let me show you the difference. Here I come, I'm back. So here is one that I've dry brushed, okay? And you can see the brick detail. And it's kind of hazy looking. And I haven't done the dull coat on it. And here is one that I just finished doing the dull coat. And do you see how it's much more clear? The brick stands out and there's less of that haze on it. And again, this is something I learned from uh, Liz. So brick has been with the white wiped off but it's got kind of that diffuse, hazy look. Here it is after the dull coat. Does the difference show up? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yep. It, it's a great technique. Like here is one that I've done on top of the, I'm doing the top of the uh, electric building. Look at how hazy it is. Look at the difference with just doing dull coat. It's pretty dramatic. How wow. it gives you a much, much better look. And it, and it also makes the brick stand out much better. I think that was a good example. Hey Jack, can you talk a little bit about the brushes you're using for the dry brushing? Those fluffy brushes? Yeah, the ones I get at Dollar General. Is that where you get them? 
yeah, I don't know if you could still get them, but they're they're great. And hang on. In other I mean, words, don't steal your wife's makeup brush. No, and then look at this. These are the cheapest things I've ever seen. They're called artist brushes. It's a four pack. I used to buy them like crazy at Dollar General and they're great for doing big areas. And you can tell they're the right kind of brush because they're very fluffy at the top. You know, when I'm doing small detail, I use the brushes I get from uh, uh, Micro Mart. And these brushes are actually designed, is it in there? Where am I? There I am. There you are. The, the, these brushes are actually in the Micro Mart catalog for dry brushing and they're great. But if you're doing a big area like the roof or the side of a box car, it'd take you forever doing it. And these big fluffy brushes are great. And, and you can just tell by the right texture that they work very, very well. But again, the key is they've just gotta be so dry, there's hardly any paint on them. And then you're dry brushing. You know, one of the things I noticed, Harry, uh, Harry, one of the things I noticed, Dr. Jack, you use like a brush for a particular color and you don't reuse it. You just use that brush for black and that brush Absolutely. for whatever. In, yeah. Yeah. I don't, that's smart. I don't cross fertilize. This will be the black yeah. brush as long as I'm alive. And this will be the buff or the tan brush. I find even yeah. when I wash them, I can't get that color out completely. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart to do it that way. But I, I think this is one, I'm glad you all asked about it. I think this is the most dramatic thing, looking at that before I apply the dull coat. And a little while ago, I dull coated this. That's pretty amazing. And yeah. for some reason, the dull coat doesn't damage the mortar look. But you got to wipe it off immediately. You can't let it sit there. And so you do a little section at a time. That's the end. Yeah, Tom. That's, that's okay, Tom was asking. He wasn't. Coat. Huh? Tom was, ask, Tom was asking because he wasn't here last week that about spraying the dull coat. So you just give it a quick spray and then wipe it right off, right? Absolutely, and I do small areas because if you leave it on too long, it's gonna dry and it's gonna work like dull coat. So I'll do a little section, wipe it off, and then another little section, wipe it off and go very quick. It goes very rapidly, but you can't let it sit there more than a few seconds. Okay, that's good, buddy. And I, I think I've talked about this before. From my mortar, all I use is one of these pretty inexpensive deco art paints I get at um, Michael's. And I mix up between white, ivory, and beige. I make my own mortar. And then uh, I mix it up and I make a big bottle. And the reason is you don't want to have to remix it halfway through a building. You'll wind up with a different color and because you're never going to get it exactly the same. Wonderful. Okie dokie. Thank you, Dr. Jack. 